Guy 231 here to break down Saturday's three game EPL slate. I almost went with this like staggered slate, but they all are until next week comes. Uh, now that the Champions League's over, we're getting some midweek EPL and we should get some slates that have multiple games starting at the same time. So that'll be fun, but let's conquer this Saturday's, uh, you know, good old throwback 2020. Uh, you know, seven or eight hour slate. Uh, should be, in my opinion, a really good slate. I, I kind of like the shakeups, especially now that uh, James Rodriguez from uh, from Everton is out. I think that that even, you know, shakes up the way people are going to build even more. So let's jump right into it. Just a quick reminder, bottom right of the screen is the subscribe button. Um, would love if you, uh, you know, would do us the honor of uh, being in your YouTube feed. Just hit that bottom right subscribe. You'll get all sorts of should uh, content, not only for soccer, but uh, football, NBA starting. We're going to have a good amount of NBA, myself and uh, Zach included. So it's a great channel to have uh, tons of free DFS advice from. All right, let's just jump into it quickly. Let's just go over the odds. Um, first game of the day, uh, West Brom going to Newcastle. Uh, you know, we have Newcastle as a slight favorite. West Brom without their best player, uh, Matias Pereira decided to lose his mind last game and get a red card. Um, and so he is gonna miss the game. I will open up one of the biggest slate values as well. I'll get to that shortly. A uh, second game, we have the Manchester Derby. Uh, City going to Manchester. Uh, City is a slight minus like 140 favorite, uh, depending on what book you look at. And then the fi uh, final game is Chelsea um, as a slight favorite, uh, minus about a little bit better than um, City minus 140 uh, favorite on the road. So let's kind of just uh, go into the games. Um, without the DK screen, I am just gonna kind of go game by game and just give my uh, my thoughts on what we have going on there. So um, look, for West Brom, I'll, I'll, let's get the, the, you know, the cat out of the bag, so to speak. Matt Phillips, uh, 3,400, he started at wing back last game. Uh, he's a guy that last season took their set pieces as well. Um, so he's gonna be a really tough fade. Um, for that price, the position, and he's a guy that we know back from EPL days a few years ago when West Brom was in the league, just loves to whip in crosses. Um, guys that love to whip in crosses are the guys that we like to target, um, you know, especially for that price. So I think Phillips will be a lock in my lineup as long as he's there. And, for, and he did take some sets last week. It was weird. Um, so uh, when Pereira first went off, uh, Gallagher took the first few, then Phillips jumped on some, and they both took over Kravinovic, um, who I would have guessed would have taken when he subbed in at half. Uh, so I guess that is definitely something that we just kind of need to keep our eyes on. Um, but again, I think even for some reason, or eyes on that lineup, but even for some reason, if um, Phillips didn't take any, I still think at 3,400, he has easy um, line to pay off his price uh, playing that wing back position. Um, outside of that, West Brom, I don't really want to go anywhere with him. Um, Furlong's been pretty good, um, you know, kind of playing that right wing back, so I think he's fine. Uh, I just think if I'm paying up at fullback, um, I want it to be one of the Chelsea guys. I think that, you know, Chelsea obviously is that uh, they're that DFS friendly, especially Reese James, who I absolutely love here. So yeah, that's gonna be um, the way that I attack, uh, you know, West Brom. From the Newcastle side of things, look, Newcastle is never like that cashy. I, I think John Joe Shelby is fine. Just he's so close to like a guy like Mason Mount that I, like, like here's how I think roster, roster construction is gonna happen, which maybe will explain why I'm not really on Newcastle guys much. So Mount 7100 um, with no ZH. Um, he's, you know, a straight line to a monopoly of set pieces for, you know, a side I really like. I, I like Chelsea even more than City probably here. Um, so it's 7100, he's a tough fade. Um, I already just went over Matt Phillips at 3,400. He provides much needed sour relief to get probably KDB. And then, you know, speaking of KDB, we have him versus a Manchester United team that bunkers when they're a dog. Um, and when KDB faces a team that bunkers, he normally goes bananas. So I think, you know, in a lot of ways, my midfield's already gonna be tied up. I'm gonna have uh, Mount and KDB are the first two clicks on my roster and then it's hard to pass up the Matt Phillips value. So a guy like John Joe Shelby, while well, yeah, in a in a vacuum at 6,500, he's fine, especially considering the matchup. But it just becomes, you know, I'm not giving him up, I'm not giving KDB up for him. 
I'm not giving mount up for him. So then it becomes, you know, am I going to give up possibly the best value on the slate? Probably not. So um, I think, oh, Newcastle is fine for GDP. Like stacking like a Shelby to a Callum Wilson goal, um, you know, or Shelby to like a center back. All that obviously is fine. Uh, I think Callum Wilson is probably my favorite play from the game. Um, I think majority of people are going to go like either two city forwards or one city, one Chelsea, some version of that in cash. Uh, or optimal builds at Ford spot. So I think that will make um, a guy like Callum Wilson, who's actually in a great spot, maybe a little bit lower owned than he should be. So I think he's a great GPP player. I just, I just don't know if I can get there for cash. Um, the one ca I, I guess the most cashy guys for Newcastle to me are the fullbacks. Uh, Mankio is probably way too cheap at 3,400. Uh, he's never a guy that like I'm gonna prioritize, but I think he's fine. As is Jamal Lewis is a lot more expensive. I think he was the 46 or 4,800. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like them. Um, I think my other four, uh, defender spot's gonna be Reese James though. So again, I'm, I'm giving you guys a ton of, uh, of my build. I, I just think like my core, um, you know, this is what I probably will put up the subs, but whatever, you're watching the video, you guys can have it too. It's likely to be KDB, Matt Phillips, Reese James, and Mason Mount. Um, and, and I'm pretty, I feel pretty confident on that. Um, being a great way to start the lineup. And then, you know, you're at four deciding between like a Werner, um, a Gabby Jesus, Marez a Finn, um, Raheem Sterling, those type of guys. Um, it's just weird on this slate to like discount Bruno Fernandez so easily, but, but we'll go over that in a second. Um, I'm trying to think. Anybody else from Newcastle? Darlow, maybe? Uh, maybe this is where you go for your goalie, especially West Brom not having their primary creative force, their best player their best set taker all that stuff so maybe it's a good time to target Newcastle and you know I've, I've said this in in uh, videos past uh, more so when we had fans in the stands but uh, Newcastle you know is always a team that does much better at home than away so again if you want to play Darlow maybe that's your your way to do it all right second game City versus United let's just get out of this way for United I, I'm not on Bruno Fernandez uh, he has you know he's arguably getting to the point that he might have a better floor than KDB. Um, if you look at like the whole sample, even with Alex Tellez in, like this was a, a conversation in our Discord was, you know, is Bruno just becoming unfadeable after what he did to Leipzig? Uh, I think a lot of that was game flow dependent and, you know, could that happen here? Um, no, <laughs> I think it's actually gonna be the way I'll say it. I just don't think, uh, Leipzig is super, super open. City is literally going to try to play defense through offense, uh, through possession. So I think it makes it really, really tough for Bruno to accrue DK points the way we want him to. So we really, really have to get a goal or assist from him to pay off. Meanwhile, if City, if this game is zero to zero in the 65th minute, there's a good chance that Kevin De Bruyne has like 20 floor points by that time. Um, if they, they'll go up one to zero in the second minute, you know, that's sometimes where we see him not go, like, nuclear with the crossing, with the shots, the shots assisted. So, I do think, you know, a lot of this game is game flow dependent, where you can kind of script that in GPPs. But in cash, I think you play KDB. And staying on the city side, I think the other, you know, city piece that we look for is them for a second forward. I think Jesus, Sterling, Mares all make sense. Mares will be the most popular cash play because he gets a share of set pieces when he's in. Um, obviously, crosses a lot more than Sterling does. Um, and you can arguably say sometimes he even shoots more than Gabby Jesus does. So yeah, I mean, Marez is fine. I, I think it just, to me, becomes like those guys are all so close together in terms of, you know, they probably all have a floor. Like that's not as good for the price as we want it to be. It's like six to seven, but they all have upside and it gets you that extra city piece, gets you that extra favor, favorite, which I think makes a ton of sense. So. That is the city side, and the fullbacks are fine. Rodri for, for value is fine. Like, Rodri would be a fine play if Matt Phillips wasn't there. I wonder if people are just going to game log, watch him see double digits and uh, his last two starts all from floor. But, like, let's be real. Like, Rodri doesn't actually have a floor. He's had a couple of good performances. Um, but, you know, expecting him to get 10 to 12 from, like, a holding defense, defensive position over and over again without any sort of set pieces, that that's that's not sustainable. So I'll take, I'll take my Matt Phillip play over him. All right. So on the United side of things, um, 
obviously, I already mentioned that I think Bruno is overpriced um, for his floor. Uh, and look, like, funny enough, like, if this was any sort of different slate and maybe, like, we didn't have Chelsea, I think I could defend playing Bruno. Like, I still think he's going to get close to double digits. I just think the range of outcomes you want for Bruno to, you know, make it worth fading, you know, the discount that you get on Mason Mount, um... And the, just the overall build that doing like KDB, Mount, and Phillips gets, I just think that you all of a sudden are in a much weirder situation playing Bruno, which is just why I'm pulling off of him. So this is not me saying he's a terrible play, just saying that, you know, in the slate context, I just don't see a way that you're playing him in like a cash or optimal build. And I would just say that with almost all of United, like it's not an Alex Tellis game. We saw crazy enough that they actually pulled Alex Tellis needing to attack. Um, I don't know if that's just that he's just not the way that uh, that Schultzsteyer wants him right now or or what it is, but, you know, I, I, I've said this over the longest time about City, though. I, I, I don't go into to City opponents looking for who's taking set pieces on the other side. It's just you can't give them that many sets. So, to me, you know, if you're going to target a United piece, it's for goal upside. So a guy like Marcus Rashford, who loves playing on the counter, I think that that's, that could be a really good GPP play. He won't be that owned. And look, we also know that uh, Manchester United is set up well to uh, to take advantage of City on the counter when City commits too many numbers forward. So maybe like a, a Martial or a Rashford. Um, I, I'm assuming Martial is in, or is it Greenwood? I don't know if Cavani's fit. But yeah, like any of those, I, I would just choose a goal scorer over anybody else. All right, final game. Let's go into Everton versus Chelsea. I do just want to start on the Chelsea side of things. So Mason Mountain to me um, is, you know, point per dollar, the best player on the slate. A monopoly set pieces without the CH. Um, I don't th think that Chilwell will all of a sudden come in and, and take any uh, of his set monopoly. So, yeah, just 7,100 for Mason Mount. Coming off of his ceiling. That's the only thing I don't like is that he's coming off of his ceiling game. But I think uh, he is a very, very good play um, and somebody I plan to build around. And the other building block, I kind of already mentioned when I mentioned the core, but Reese James has just been nothing short of phenomenal. It's almost a lock for double digits um, every game. Uh, especially in the game versus Everton, who does play open as well, and maybe without Jan Hymas. Uh, never really know what to say, James or Hymas, whatever. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe they actually need to be a little, play a little more pragmatically than Ancelotti wants to, which means playing more defensive. Um, and, you know, when teams sit back, that's a really, really good uh, way for Reese James to get very in the game in terms of crossing. I, I prefer Reese James for the price discount than Ben Showell. Um, you know, if you want it to go the other way or want to pivot off of that for that reason, or you think Chola might take CH's sets or something like that, like, no problem. I, it, it's fine to me. Um, outside of that, the, I think the next big Chelsea decision is, are you going to play Timo Werner? I expect him to be really, really popular on uh, playing on that left wing spot. Also, as long as we don't see Jorginho, we know he gets PKs, which this season has meant uh, a lot in Chelsea games. Um, I would assume that Olivier Giroud uh, the sexiest man in football, obviously. Um, I think that he's taken the, that starting striker position from Tammy Abraham based on the fact that Abraham played midweek. Um, look, you can't argue with his form. Uh, he's just scoring at will right now. So, you know, I think in GPPs, he's like the easy ownership pivot off of Timo Werner, who just, I assume, based on name, um, will be more owned than him. So that's just like an easy swap in your lineup. Just, just swap in Giroud. Or if you really, really like Chelsea and you think that United, you know, is going to give City problems, like the easy build is you go, um, you go uh, both forward spots being like Giroud plus, um, plus Werner, you know, play David De Gea uh, from United, the cheapest goalie in the slate and, and roll from there and just hope that Chelsea onslaughts and hope, and hope that Manchester United comes up with one of these like crazy OGS bailouts where they get a result out of nowhere and they win the game one nothing or 2-1 to one or something like that. So I think that that's a good script to build your lineups off of. I think right wing will start Kai Havertz. Um, Kai has not looked good out as a right wing. He is much better just being able to like free range and play as like a true 10. So I think, uh, you know, not knowing who's going to be at that right wing spot, I, I would assume that as good as Chelsea's playing, that Lampert isn't going to change the system. He's just going to try to swap in and Kai there for ZH. Um, 
I think he's a fine GPP play. I think Chelsea is a full stack. Makes a ton of sense. Do like the front three, plus Reese James, even plus Joel if you want. Um, and just go full late game hammer onslaught. I, I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah, I think that covers Chelsea on the Everton side of things. Yes, Gilfie Sigerson, uh with no Lucas Dean and with no Jaime Rodriguez should jump into a monopoly of set pieces. That does not mean you should play him. Chelsea's been playing a great uh, possession-based system. Um, we saw, what was it? I think it was versus Newcastle um, with no Dean. Actually, it might have been Dean in. I can't remember offhand. But um, Gilfie was not... Um, vintage New, uh, geez, I almost said Newcastle. Um, Swansea, Gilfie Sigurdsson, he did still struggle in that game. Um, and that was versus, I believe it again, it was Newcastle. I think he maybe had like eight or nine floor, which I guess, you know, struggle is the wrong word, but he was not like 25 DK. This is not a matchup where I need to, to force him in. Now, here's the thing if he was a forward eligible, he would probably be like chalk and cash, but he's not, he's only midfield. Um, I've already mentioned. Mount KDB, Matt Phillips is likely how I'm going to go in midfield. You know, if we don't get Phillips, you know, maybe that that's a, a fine reason to go with um, with a guy like Sigurdsson, or you know, maybe at that point it's better to go with like Connor Gallagher or like John Joe Shelby, like somebody in a better position than Everton playing without some of their their key players and um, you know having to rely on Gilfie. But outside of that, the rest of Everton to me is just pure GPP. Uh, Richarlson obviously is, is doable as a second forward in cash. Um, you know, he does have a floor, but I, again, you know, how much is this floor going to be without any of other creative forces? I think I think it's tougher. And then uh, Calvert-Lewin, just pure GPP. He's goal or bust. So those are the only really Everton pieces I can consider. Alright guys, that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and good luck in your contest tomorrow. Again, once again, Keith aka GatorGuy231. With that, I say, see ya!